Hello, let's do the New York Times Medium Sudoku for April 15th, 2024. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, and I'm going to get started right now. All right, starting with our top band scanning here, we do have two fives. We're, we're looking for, for doubled up digits, right? So we have two fives here looking in. This five looks up. That puts a five in one of these two. We're going to use corner marks to denote that in this box, the five has been limited to these two cells. If you would like to use this software that I'm using, it's, a, it's just a web page uh, to solve, which has this corner center mark notation, unlike the New York Times uh, official um, page. Uh, you can use the link in the description to, to solve it there. I also have a link in the description for how to import any puzzle you'd like into this software called SudokuPad uh, for free. All right. Um, so I'm just going to start by looking for doubled up digits in the bands and in the stacks, and we're going to see where that leads us. We'll do, uh, we'll do more afterwards. Um, so the eights double up, and this eight looks up, so we're going to put an eight in one of these two. Um, so we're looking for six, one, eight. Okay, yeah, that's that's all that doubles up there. Down here, what doubles up? Um, we got the two sevens looking in, and this seven actually looks down. So now there's only one place in this box for seven. The box needs a seven, so it's got to go there. That's called a hidden single, if you want a name for that, because uh, it's there's a single place for it hidden in this box somewhere, and we found it. All right. Uh, any there's no double up for the one two. There's no double up for the nine. Um, okay, so now we're going to look for doubling up uh, vertically. We're just seeding the grid with some some obvious, uh, not I don't know if obvious is the right term, but just some some. We're seeding the board with information um, in a pretty systematic way to start with. So literally just looking for doubled up digits here. So sevens and one of those two. So three and five. We're looking for a pair there. Seven and nine. We're looking, so the nine also. All right, so now here's here's a little okay, yeah. Um, never mind. I was going to show you a trick. Let's show you the trick anyway. Let's pretend this nine wasn't there. So we have corner marked the seven and the nine. It's two different digits in two cells, exactly overlapping. When that happens, you can convert those to center marks. You can say, well, those cells can only be seven nine because seven and nine need to go in this box somewhere, and they're 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 sharing the same two cells. They need two cells, so that's called a hidden pair. So we would be able to actually convert this to center marks as a 7-9 pair. Again, we're ignoring that this 9 is here. We would be able to put 7-9, meaning that and what we use center marks for is saying this cell can only be those values. We have reduced this specific cell down to those values. Now, of course, now this 9 has suddenly appeared, and we can actually resolve it. This is the 7, this is the 9. We could, If I go back, we could have also done this in a different way, right? We could have said these two 9s look into this box, and then this 9 also looks in. So there's only one place in this box for 9. When I get that 9, I'm noticing that it's getting rid of one of my 7 corner marks, because 9 is not 7. So that 7 mark corner mark isn't possible anymore. And because I corner marked, meaning in this box 7 could only go in those two places, now there's only one place left for the 7, so I can place the 7 as well. Same exact result, but depends on how you want to approach that kind of thing. Uh, over here we're looking for doubled ups. We actually have all three ones, so that's not helpful. 2 and 7. We have two 7s. And this 7 looks in, so we're going to place the 7. So basically what we're looking for is places to put corner marks and also hidden singles. Let's follow up on that 7 we placed. Let's also follow up on this 7, 9 we placed. Let's do that first. Always want to follow up. I forgot to on this one. Because we already scanned this band. So we want to make sure that we uh, rescan it to get the new information. So now these 7s look in. We corner mark the 7s. We have the same exact situation here. This is a hidden 5, 7 pair. So we convert those to center marks. Meaning these two cells can't be anything else other than 5, 7. We've proven that because we need to fit 5 and 7 in the box somewhere. Um, so that follows up with a 7. How about the 9? Yeah, we have these two 9s looking in, so 9 ends up up here. We also just got, I believe, this 7, so we can follow up with that. The 7 looks up, so 7's in one of these two cells. Okay, that was follow up for the 7. 1, 2, 7, uh, anything with 6, 8? Yeah, the two 6s look down. So 6 is in one of these two cells. All right, so we have now exhausted what we could get from the obvious doubled up digits in every uh, band and stack, um, unless we failed to follow up on something. So the next thing we want to look for is we're going to go box by box, and we're going to look for uh, what I call crossings. So crossings are when you have the same digit looking in from two different directions. 
And we really only care about that in cases, because we already found the double ups, right? So we only care about in the cases where we have givens in really opportune locations. So for example, these givens here, they're all avoiding this column here. And so if I find anything in this column that isn't already placed in the box, like this eight, that's going to eliminate from most of the, the cells in the box. So actually, none of these are eight. And even though we don't even have a buddy eight over here, we still limited eight to one of these two cells. And that's going to give us what's called pointing. So the way pointing works is within this box, we have limited eight to these two cells. By doing so, we know that the box needs an eight. The eight's going to be here, right here, or it's going to be right here. Those are our only two choices. There is not a third choice. In both of those choices, the eight ends up in column four here, this column. So we can't actually put the eight down here anymore, specifically this cell. The, this, these other cells already couldn't be eight. So let's look at how that affects the placement of eight in this box, right? This eight already looks down. These pointing eights look down here. This eight looks in. So eight ends up being only in one of these two cells. All right. Now, is there anything else we might want to look at? So we want to look at pairs of digits that are in the same row or the same column. So this three, seven, we already looked at that. We looked at this column. But we also have this 5, 7. So we want to look for anything in this row that isn't already in the box. So just the 1. That looks in. And we'll look for a buddy 1 down here, but it doesn't have one. Now we can look at the 5, 9, right? So what are the things that I'm going to place? Just this 6, but there is no buddy 6 down here. So that's not helpful. And we can look at the 7, 9. There's, no, there's nothing up here that's not already placed. So that's all we're getting out of that box right now. This box here, crossings, we might have one on the 7, 9. Or sorry, this the 6, 7. So maybe the 9 would do it. This 9 looks in. And actually, we already have 9s marked in this box. So we don't really care about that. Um, we also have this 5, 6. 6 and 7 are already in the box. Not helpful. All right. So nothing there. Now here, this is kind of a, a special formation because we really want to look for anything that's looking through here or looking through here that isn't already placed in the box. So this 1, for example, looks in. And that just by itself is going to corner mark ones here. And that's also pointing. That points down. This one looks in. That's actually a crossing on this 7, 9 that we found. So there's a 1 and 1 of these two. Those also point in. This one looks in. And that places 1 in this box. All right. Now we want to follow up on the ones that we got here, especially this one. But there's, there's really nothing to follow up on up here. So that's, that's fine. Um, now, is there anything looking down through here? Yeah, we have the five. So that makes us a five in one of these two cells. That is going to point. It's going to take five out of these cells. This five looks down. This five looks up. It, it doesn't limit five enough for us to corner mark. Generally, we're only corner marking if the um, if it's, we're down to two cells in a box. You can corner mark three cells left if they're in a row. What we don't want to do is corner mark these fives here like this, because you might get confused and think that we have pointing here or pointing here if you're not paying attention to the markings. So it's not a, it's not a good marking to do because we're mostly paying attention to two left in a box, which means removing one places the other, or, um, or pointing, where they line up in a row or column. OK, so we looked at this box. I found the 5 and the 1. I don't see anything else really looking in in a, in a useful way. Like this 3 looks in, but it's not, it's not a useful way to, to look in. Um, so now we're going to look at this box. We're going to look for crossings again. So 1, 8, but the 1 and the 7 are already in the box. We have the 1, 7, maybe the 9. No, the 9 isn't quite good enough. There's nothing, there's no buddy. Um, those are the only opportunities for crossings that I see. Okay, how about this box? So when we're down to only three cells in a box, I think it's always worthwhile just to center mark them. So we're just going to center mark this box and see what it tells us. So uh, we are down to, we have the one, we need two, three, and actually we're now just seeing, I, I could have seen that, that we needed the two, right? So let's just do that. This two looks in, so there's only one place for two in the box, which is here. Make sure we follow up, so this two looks into this box, this two looks in here. That places this two. Now notice when we place that two, it gets rid of this eight corner mark, so now we can place the only eight corner mark that's left. Let's follow up on that eight as well. These eights look in, this eight looks down, so we have an eight down here. Uh, we want to backtrack, make sure we follow up on everything. So this 2 also looks up, and it joins the 5. So we have another hidden pair. This is a 2-5 hidden pair. Um, so that does mean that the 2 is not in these cells. Um, I'm not seeing anything immediate to do with that, though. 
Um, but it does mean that this is a triple remaining. Whenever we have a triple remaining, it's always useful just to mark it up. We are going to backtrack and mark this as well, but I want to do this first. So we need the one. We have two in the two five pair. We need a three somewhere. We have four. We have five in the two five pair. We we need a six, and that should be it because we have the seven, eight, and nine. This can't be six because of that six there. So now now we know this is a one three six triple. There's one digit missing from this column that hasn't been isn't accounted for in the one three six and isn't placed. Uh, which is the four. So this is this ends up being a four, naked single four. Okay, we can follow up on this four because we have two fours that places the four here. Um, follow up on this four, puts a four in one of these two cells. Nothing really interesting there. Um, I'm going to backtrack all the way to here. I'm going to fill this pair. Uh, it's the three and the, uh, what am I saying? Three and nine. Okay. And so that 3-9 pair tells us that this is also a pair. It's the two missing digits that aren't 3-9 or the givens. So it's the 1. We have 2, 3, 4. We need a 5. And then we also have the 6, 7, 8, and 9 accounted for. So this is a 1-5 pair. And now for this box, we now have two digits remaining that aren't accounted for. What are they? Well, we have 1, 2. We need 3. And the 3 actually is placed. So we can place the 3. And then the last digit will also be placed, which is a 6. That six removes this six corner mark, placing this six, which removes an eight corner mark, placing this eight. Uh, this is now a eight. Uh, oh, no, I misscanned. One, two, oh, three is what's missing. That's a three. Uh, DT two in the corner, three in the corner, three in the spotlight. Um, one, two, three, four. We need five and nine here. This five looks down, so that's nine. That's five. Okay, so this, this band is basically done. We just need to resolve this 3, 9, and 1, 5. So let, we need to look elsewhere. But we just got a lot in this band. So I think it's a good idea to look at the verticals again because we have a lot of information about these boxes now, especially this box. I'm going to start here. So first of all, we, this 9 looks up. I just noticed that. So we can place this 9 in the box. Um, but let's look for buddies for every single digit. So 1s are done. The 9s are not done. These two 9s look in. That puts a 9 in. Actually, this 9 looks in as well. So with all these 9s looking in, we can place the 9 in this box. Follow up, these two nines look in, this nine looks down, so nine's in one of these two. I don't think there's any more follow up with that. Uh, the five is gonna have a buddy, right? All of them have a buddy, so we can place the five here. The sixes are done, the sevens are done. Um, how about the eights? These two eights look up, putting an eight in one of these two. Oh, this, this column is just done. We just need to fill the last digit, which is a two. Uh, in fact, these columns are down to three digits each, so it might be easier at this point just to think about what those three digits are. So in this column, we need a two, a three, and a four. We've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, two, three, four. So um, I'm going to fill that out real quick. Uh, two, three, four. We see that this can't be the two or the three, right? So this has to be the four because it needs to be a value, so it's only a four. That removes this four corner mark, placing the four here, and we're left with a two, three pair. But if you look, we actually have this 2-5 pair here, so this can't actually be a 2. So this is the 3, this is the 2. That resolves this 6 as well. Uh, let's follow up on this stuff that we got, but first let's fill this pair, um, and then we'll, then we'll try to follow up on all that. Uh, at some point, you just got to pick and choose your battles. This is 3-8. All right, so following up here, uh, there's going to be a lot of buddies between these two boxes, and we might be able to find something in this, in this empty box here. So uh, let's just do each digit at a time. 1 doesn't have a buddy. 2 has the buddy in the 2-5 pair. This 2 also looks up. So 2 is down here. 3 does not have a buddy. 4 has this buddy. This 4 looks up. So 4 is in one of these two. Now notice we have the 4 and the 9 now overlapping. So this is a hidden 4-9 pair, meaning that this can't be 7. So we can place the 7 here. That's a 5 and a 7. Follow up on the 7s, follow up on the 5s. These two 5s look down. We have this 5 here. We can place the 5 in the box. This 2-5 pair also helped. Um, okay, do we want to backtrack? Yeah, uh, what did I, what would I get up to? I don't know what I got up to. Uh, one, two, three, four. I think I did the four. Yeah, so now let's do fives. We got the fives. Sixes. Six buddy is over here. This six looks in. We can place the six. Sevens, um, eights, and nines. All right, so that's taken care of. I think at this point, we're pretty close to done. Um, I'm going to target rows, columns, and boxes with three or fewer open cells. And we're or four or fewer open cells, I should say, and we're going to pencil them. Uh, but we're going to start with the most limited ones. So this sounds down to three. So we need a one. We have the two. We need three. And we know we need an eight because we have this corner mark eight sitting there. Um, okay, that doesn't clean up at all. 
This row, let's just think about it. It's one, two, three, eight. We know this isn't the one or the eight because of that. I'm just going to leave all my pencil marks in because we're almost done with the puzzle. Uh, okay, so let's look at this column. We need one, two, five, eight. This can't be the one, two, or five. One, two, five. So this can only be eight. That's three and eight. This is, uh, oh, let's clean that up as well. That places the eight here. Just trying to follow up on everything. At this point, it's really wherever you look, you're going to find something. This is down to one, two, five. Can't be five. So it's only one, two. Um, this whole box, we need one, two, four, and six. This can't be the four, six, right? So this is one, two. So where do four and six go in this box? They go here. Four, six pair. Okay. We are left with a one, two, five triple here, a one, two, five triple here. All right. This box is for sure going to resolve all that. Um, we may be better off looking for buddies horizontally or vertically. Okay. Yeah. So vertically, we've got these eights all looking in. So let me place that eight. This is now down to one or two, but it can't be a one. So this is two. This is one. That's two. I think all of this is resolving now. Um, we get the three here, the one and the two. That gives us the one and the three, nine and three, four and nine. That's a three. When I meant everything's resolving, I meant it. Another three in the corner, three in the spotlight, four and six, but not six. That's four. That's six. That's four. We're after the one and a sixth. It goes in that order, and we're done. All right. Well, hopefully, um, I think for the mediums, I'm going to be doing it this way, uh, where I normally I would scan everything that I scanned all at once, um, which can save time. But I think doing them uh, one at a time, even though we end up rescanning some things, um, I think will give us the low hanging fruit first. And I think that's going to be better for the medium and better for kind of learning how these individual scanning techniques work. We can just focus on one at a time. We ignore, you know, if, if you see something market, I'm actually going to ignore anything else I see that isn't exactly what I'm saying I'm scanning for so that you can get used to what those do. And you can get really fast at doing those scanning uh, steps. So for the hard, I combine them. For the medium, I'm going to do it this way. Hopefully that'll help train you. Um, I figure if you're watching the medium, maybe you uh, haven't graduated to the hard yet, or you still find the medium to be difficult. So maybe this will help with that. This medium had a lot of hidden pairs. That was neat. Um, this wasn't really a hidden pair of the 7-9, but we found it that way. We had a hidden 5-7 pair here. Uh, I'm not going to remember every single hidden pair we had. But uh, we had this, I think this 2-5 hidden pair, I think, happened at some point, uh, which gave us this one three six triple. Uh, yeah, so there are hidden pairs all over the place, and that was extremely helpful. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope this was uh, useful and informative. And if it was any of those things, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.